A few months ago, we were boondocking in a remote, quiet location. We were working when we heard the water pump cycle. But we weren't running water. After confirming that no faucets were dripping, we went back to work. And then we heard it again. And again. And even though it's unlikely you'll ever have the exact same situation, the steps we took to diagnose and solve it might give you some ideas about troubleshooting similar issues on your RV. Since on-demand water pumps only operate when water's running, we were concerned that we might have a water leak. We checked everywhere we could, both inside and underneath the RV, for signs of water and found nothing. We timed the frequency of the water pump cycling and found that it was running once every minute and 10 seconds, like clockwork. Our first assumption was a faulty backflow preventer in the water pump that was slowly allowing the pressure to drop causing the pump to periodically repressurize. Since it was working okay otherwise, we weren't in a big rush to replace it. But then we noticed a second symptom. While connected to city water, our freshwater tank would continue to fill, eventually dripping water out the overflow. So this could mean our tank fill valve was leaking. Now we had two potentially related symptoms. So we needed to figure out if one failed component could be causing both problems. In examining our plumbing layout, we realized that regardless of whether we're hooked up or running the pump, water has two paths to the freshwater tank. Through the city water fill valve, of course, but also through the water pump. Not every RV is plumbed this way, so yours may be different. We needed to figure out if there was a way to isolate the pump and the fill valve so we can determine which one is the culprit. The supply line between our fresh water tank and the water pump goes through our winterizing kit. By closing it off, we could block the path that city water would have to the fresh water tank through the water pump. If that stopped the tank from overflowing, the problem was the pump. But if the tank continued to overflow, it had to be a leaking city water fill valve, since that was now the only route to the tank. Sure enough, the tank continued to overfill, confirming that the fill valve was leaking. When we're hooked up, it allows water to continue to seep into the fresh tank. And when we're boondocking, it allows the water pressure to drop, causing the pump to cycle to repressurize the system. So now we're going to replace it. Luckily, we have a couple of extra valves in our spare parts bin since we removed our original water filter plumbing when we installed our Acuva water purifier. We also saved the extra PEX pipe from that project. That's good, because looking behind the water panel, we can see that all of the connections are PEX, which also means we'll need a few special tools. We'll also need a little dexterity, since this is a tight area to work in. To get started, we'll use our PEX tool to pry off the crimp ring that secures the valve to the main water line. We grasp the nub on the ring and twist it back and forth. Since the T in the line is plastic, we're careful not to apply too much pressure so we don't break it. We can unscrew the handle from the valve and the two screws that hold the support bracket in place. With the crimp ring removed, we can now score the PEX hose with a utility knife so we can get it off. Again, being careful not to damage the plastic T in the process. This allows us to flex the pipe away from the panel enough to use our cutting tool. With the valve out of the way, we used a small flat blade screwdriver to gently pry the pipe from the T. The rest of this is much easier, since we've got the fitting out into the open now. We continue dismantling the PEX connections until we've removed everything from the elbow that connects to the hose, leading to the freshwater tank. Using the old sections of pipe, we measure to make sure we cut the two replacement sections to the exact same length. Once they're cut, we slide a crimp ring onto one end, insert it onto the valve, and use the PEX tool to squeeze the crimp ring tight, sealing the connection. The crimping tool is pretty easy to use. 
Just keep squeezing until it won't go any further. Once the ring is properly crimped, the tool will release. Crimp rings should be positioned about a quarter inch from the end of the pipe. We also made sure to face the nubs away from the front of the valve, since we'll be installing it flush to the panel and don't want them to interfere. Before we attach the new valve to the elbow, we make sure it's right side up, so that the knob rotates correctly to match the labeling on the panel. Once we crimp it to the elbow on the tank fill hose, and unscrew the handle, we put the crimp ring in place for the final connection and slide it up onto the main water line T. Because the space behind the panel is so limited, we make sure to position the crimp ring so we have room to get the PEX tool onto it, and we crimp the last connection. We're almost done! The support bracket gets screwed back into place. We reattach the handle to the valve and turn on the city water for a pressure test, which means one last time Peter has to squeeze his head under the panel to check for any signs of leaking. But now comes the final test, turning off the city water and turning on the pump to see if it stops cycling by itself. After leaving the pump turned on for more than 15 minutes, it hasn't cycled a single time. Looks like we got it fixed. Hey! What's going on in here? I was thirsty. 